Um, I am back with another Chloe's journal video. This is Chloe's journal, or going to be. As you will see from last time, it has changed. <laughs> um, the last video showed this. This was supposed to be Chloe's journal, but I changed my mind. As I would say, as is my right, but <laughs> I consulted Shell first and she agreed. Uh, the blue one is bigger. So that makes my life a lot easier. Um, the blue one is bigger. It's a lot sturdier. It already has a bit of a rough, ragged look to it. I went ahead and stamped that myself with... There it is. With this music note treble clapper music note stamp stamped it on myself um, and also this, it's just a plain book but on the spine it says music calling it used to be a music book it was a book full of music paper uh, which I gutted and then that nice textured turquoise paper I was so excited about in the last video I used to reinforce the inside of the book and the spine which worked great because now the spine is a bit more rigid and solid instead of flopping around all over the place which is awesome it also just gives it a bit of extra strength for when I come to sew through it because the sewing the binding will be on the outside of the journal um, Well, the binding will be on the inside but the thread like this you will see thread on the outside so um, obviously with the journal being blue I am going to use blue thread to do it so it won't I'll try and find some threads that tie in very similar color so yes it's going to come through that a little bit I'm hoping to actually try and get it at either side of that but it doesn't matter anyway because uh, I'm going to make a dangly for to hang on to the side, the back the uh, the spine. I need coffee. <laughs> um, but yeah. So anyway, the book has grown basically. Um, it had whole it had already been gutted ages and ages ago because I've had this book for a while. I'm not sure. Oh, there it is. This is the original book. And yeah, it's upside down. <laughs> this is the original book. So all this was inside here before I gutted it. Gutted it meaning taking it all out. And it was a book just full of music and things like that. Which I'm pretty sure Chloe probably isn't going to have any interest in. Although I hear on the grapevine she does like music. As most children do. But um, she's part of a cheer cheerleading team, so she's a cheerleader. So um, when she's practicing cheer or cheering techniques, not techniques, routines, um, obviously she listens to a lot of music. So yeah, I'm guessing it'll, the the book's not going to be a music heavy themed one. I just thought it'd add a bit of extra to it. Let's shuffle my brew out of the way because I've got I need the space. I'm running on caffeine today. Um so yeah, the book has been reinforced, it's all dry, did that a couple of days ago. That's been put to the side now. That won't be getting used for Chloe's journal, but I will be using it for something else later on down the line. Um I've been quite busy. Since the last video, I've cut out some unicorns and from the material and frayed around the edges. Um, I've cut little bits of the wavy material up. Um, I've used some 
lace butterfly lace i'm not sure if i showed that in the last video i'm not i don't think i did can't remember but i'm gonna get the pin out of it uh i used this i'll show you in a minute i used this because i thought this was just perfect it's butterflies it's flowers nice girly colors and where have i just put that pin um there it is it's hiding uh, that's all falling off anyway so i'll put that in there come back to that later i'm trashing my room don't worry um i have also cut some of the mermaid material up into more manageable pieces little chunks there's a mermaid and a mercat cute um made some tags i'll show you how, i'll show you why i've got them in a minute um i made a bigger piece well not made it i just cut it out and frayed a bigger piece that will go in the book somewhere probably as a material flip i've made this nice longer piece which i'm thinking now is perfect for putting on the edge of a paper edge of paper i've cut this one more to size i'm loving this I am thinking maybe a tag for that. I'll just make a bigger tag, obviously, but a tag for that. Because I think that would look awesome as a tag. And then I cut these bits out, just the pink and the purple pieces. I really like these. Um, cut them a few different sizes. Got bits everywhere. Um, cut them down into a few different sizes they will be used and that's about it material wise that's as far as i got um some of the cheesecloth has been used i'll show you in a minute but that's about as far as i got with the material side of things and fluffing but i did use some material so i'm going to show you what i made put them back in the box and i don't lose them um, that one as well. I don't need to put the old book back in the box. Um, but yes, also before I do show you anything else, I have some amazing, well I think it's amazing anyway because I'm using it downstairs, um, wallpaper samples. It's not even a sample, it is wallpaper just cut up into small manageable pieces for me. Um, and I have, or I have and I will be using this in the journal. I will be incorporating this into the journal as you will see in a minute. I have already done one and I shall be using this one next. It's the same wallpaper. It's just cutting different bits. But the, because it's in two pieces, like wood grained and that bit and that bit, they are perfect size for just folding in half and cut into size they're perfect so not just for chloe's journal but for others too but shell said butterflies flowers and girly so that's the route i've gone down in the meantime i did these off camera obviously well I'm saying obviously off camera because oh my word what a nightmare what an absolute nightmare good fun but what a nightmare i made this I made, well I didn't make friends with the sewing machine, I, no, no I didn't. I have not made friends with the sewing machine, I don't think I ever will make friends with the sewing machine. But I made this, with the sewing machine. <laughs> um, we had many disagreements, it is no secret, I am terrified of them. I have had one for about four-ish years now, uh, my mum bought it me as a Christmas present one year. And um, yeah, we, we have had many arguments, not me and my mum, me and the machine. We have had many arguments since. Sorry, I'm eating a grape. It was just there. <laughs> Sorry. Had to do it. Um, let's see if I can swing you around and show you. There's the machine. But yeah. I am terrified of them. But I thought now it's about time to sort yourself out. And get on the... Get back on. Well, not even back on. I can use sewing machines, I just do not like them. They scare me so much. Um, but get back on the bike, so to speak, and get over it. Get yourself sorted. 
so i made this and the good thing is to some people you might look and think what on earth is that it's the most tattiest thing ever but in a junk journal this is it this is this is amazing people in the junk journal world will look at that and go oh wow awesome other people might look and think that's a bit tatty but that's the whole point of a junk journal it's supposed to look like you've used junk so i'm quite pleased with this and i did this naturally this was just my first attempt but i had issues with this i really did so we've got the mermaid and the sea turtle sea turtle as i tried to call it in the last video i used the some of the butterfly ribbon i keep wanting to say lace but to me it just it's, i don't know it's ribbon whatever but i used some of that on the edging mainly because it really was tatty and scruffy on more scruffier on that edge so i used that there um zigzag stitch straight stitched and then this material is stretchy um so of course trying to pull it taut and sew is not easy not for me anyway because i have no idea what i'm doing um it is kind of straight it's not like that because i pulled it taut it's like that because that's how i cut it <laughs> it wasn't square to begin with um there was bits like that where i completely messed up on the sewing machine and <sighs> yeah got all the thread bunched up and stuck underneath and a little bit there as i were turning the corner and there's bits there where i missed and there's a real mess under there <laughs> but yeah it's yeah but i did it i'm really proud of myself i did it so i sewed the material to this paper which is actually paper dyed with her dye <laughs> yes um it was a little note not a note well yeah no one second and i'll show you what sort of paper it was it's a little note paper just excuse me while i'm rooting this humongous box of coffee dyed and all sorts dyed paper um, where is it there I'll show you this one, it's better. Excuse me, that grape is repeating on me. I shouldn't have done that. Stick that down there out of the way. Right, this was one of these. This has been dyed with ribena juice, actually. Um, but that's what this was. It was one of them, and it was dyed with hair dye, sprayed with watered down hair dye. And then it got folded over, as you can see along there it got folded over well it got sewn to this first this got sewn to that first and then i folded it over i was intending to make a pocket out of it but then i thought no i don't really want to do that i want to put some cheesecloth on it so i did i used the cheesecloth as i showed in the other video um unfortunately i cut it a bit too short around the edges so it just does look tatty so I mean, can pull some little pieces out, but I'm thinking of just another few little pieces just glued on the edges will make it come back to life. Simple reason being, I was going to put, going to use it. This is also why the journals now ended up being bigger than it was than this because I did this in all intentions of putting it here, but I didn't think to measure anything first, and it's too big it's slightly too big to even go on the front and even at that with the butterflies it doesn't look right and it's definitely too big to go inside i was going to do it and then turn it into a pocket but it's too big but i really wanted to use it and when i showed michelle this she's like oh my god you've got to use that i'm like i can't yeah but it's too big to put in that one so then i found this book and it per it's perfect so the idea was to put it here on the inside as a pocket just glue around there and up the sides and use it as a pocket but then i thought do you know what why hide it i really love it i'm not going to hide it so before i stamped that the idea then came of gluing it here on the front of the book so that's what we're going to do i showed michelle some pictures and asked her opinion and she's like yeah on the front so it's going to go there on the front. It's just not a pocket. It's just going to get glued down with fabric tack because um, that really will keep it in place. And then I stamped underneath just to also it hides that by gluing it at the top. So I was going to put it at the bottom, 
but by putting it at the top it hides that and then by stamping that it just doesn't need anything else on the front just that and then there's going to be the binding anyway that not binding the closure like ribbon or something to close it up with so it's perfect so that is going to get glued onto there and that's the front of the book in fact that's the book itself sorted i'm not putting anything on the back or the spine so that's it so so far i've done the book i've done the front cover of the book then i got set to and i made some tags i made this llama tag drama llama um, I made this llama tag, as you can see, I cut round some of the, well, I cut round the llama out of the material, and then this is just a piece of scrapbook paper. Um, not sure, was this part of the paper pack that I showed in the last video? I think it were, I think there were three set, three sheets of this, weren't there? But anyway, this was just a piece of scrapbook paper that I drew a tag on, I traced around my tags that I showed in the last video and then I folded the paper well actually I folded the paper in half first then I drew around the tag then I glued the paper together so it just it's double thickness and it just makes it a bit stronger um, I then just glued that on I didn't do any fancy stitching or anything like that I just glued it on and then I used my um, crocodile to stick an eyelet in the and then I used some, um, well, just grey, grey silver. Grey gray with silver sparkly wool, just as a bit of a, mainly because it's supposed to replicate like the llama's hair. But yeah, that's it. There's nothing special about it, just a tag. And the way I was thinking was, it's just going to get tucked in the book somewhere. But with this having lines... If she uses a, a black pen or a dark enough pen, she can use that as lines to journal on. So there she has an extra journaling spot, tag, whatever. And then, after doing this, I thought, right, I'm going to be a bit cocky now and I'm going to have another go. Literally about an hour after I'd done that, I'm really proud of myself and showing it off to the world for about 100 times. I got back up here, I changed the thread and everything on the machine. And I made this. Cut out some more tags from some awesome metallic papers. Cardstock paper. Um, once again, I put a um, eyelet in there. And then just some blue thread. This thread um, was actually the thread that I sewed with. All the little bits that came off. Um, here, if I can get out. This is right next to my sewing machine, and when I'm cutting threads after I've been sewing, they get thrown in this dish. Yes, it's a dog bowl, I know. They get thrown into this dish, and them fibres in there is actually the blue tack, the blue thread that I was sewing with. And after I'd finished, there were quite a bit of it left over. I did make a few mistakes before getting it right, so I just pulled them all off, um, put them all together, doubled them in half. And looped them through to make the little fluffy bit on the top but sorry one sec guys sorry guys uh postman <laughs> i just saw him coming past the window and he waved at me <laughs> um anyway forgot what i was saying now um yeah fibers anyway so yeah all the bits of threads and everything that were cut off here i just bunched together pulled it through tied it did i tie it in a knot yeah i've tied it in a knot best i can um used a eyelet star shaped one and that's it but i made it into a little pocket on a tag which is awesome it's the unicorn one um and it's got a little booklet in it now chloe if you're watching which you probably will be don't pull it from the top you can do but as you pull it from the top, the material across the top is likely to fray quite a bit. So just very gently at the bottom, push up. Okay? So, yeah, you can get it in and out, no problem. But instead of pulling from the top, trying to get your fingers in there and pull, push up from the bottom. It's a lot easier. And that way you're not doing any damage because it's sewn down there. But yeah, so inside there, 
We have a cute little butterfly, some polka dot paper, some more of the blue metallic uh, scrapbooking card. And I just made a cute little book, an extra little book for more journaling space. There you go. Awesome. So yeah, and then that just pops back in there like that so but yeah cute and i'm uncertain yet whether or not i'm going to glue that down excuse me i'm uncertain whether or not to glue it down or just tuck it in uh, if i tuck it in then there's extra space there on the back to write if it gets glued down i will glue it down as a pocket so you can tuck stuff at the back of it as well as you've got a cute little notebook there for extra journaling space so yay um well, let's see I may put this in as well i have some um ribena dyed papers and stuff it'll tie in tie the bluey things bluey turquoisey things in more we'll see but yeah so off camera we've done the book We've done the front cover for the book. We've done two tags in a little notebook. That needs to be glued on there, which will probably be done ready for next video. These are some scrap pieces of papers, um, which probably will get incorporated into the book for somewhere down the line. These are going to be turned into either um, little extra, little journaling flips, um, this I'm thinking of turning into a pocket. Um, I don't want to cut it that way to put it in, so it's going to go in that way. Um, but I'm thinking may possibly for the, the middle signature. Because if I do it that way, glue it later, but if I do it that way, I'll be sewing through here. And I can tie there and then just glue up the sides and it'll hide the threads inside but I don't know yet but either way that'll go in and I'm just thinking of gluing down them two sides and then it'll be you'll, you'll be able to use it as a little pocket these I will either turn into more books so put some more paper in there like I did with the one in the unicorn tag um, so put some more paper in there and then you've got another little well two little books inside the book or I might just stick it glue the back onto a page and then you've just got two little bits there that you can maybe glue or stick a picture or something on I don't know we'll see we'll see and there'll probably be loads of little bits and bats like that because it's just leftover pieces of paper and card from when I've cut these up this is the wallpaper that I was talking about um, which is this um, it is I used that piece I've used this piece actually that bit there literally that bit there at the bottom um, so this is signature number one a signature is this literally this it is a group of papers together that form the book well not the book that form that bit <laughs> um, basically a book inside the book so this is a signature like I said it's just a collection of papers and stuff that are all folded in half to create the inside of the book and you can have quite a lot of signatures or you could just have one big one I'm going to do two so this is one it's not finished yet this is one and then what happens is when this is all done and I've decided right that's enough now this then gets sewn into the spine so this one will be sewn there pretty much and then signature number two will be sewn next to it at that side so when you open the book you'll have two um, every book that you buy has a signature in it Or it has multiples in it and the best way to see what I'm taught to understand it it's a bit hard when you it's all laid bare 
is to look at an already existing book and you'll see this is a very bad example oh there let's hope it's focusing right here you can see these have got like book binding sewn down the edge of the spine i'm thinking of doing this too Let's make a little bookmark actually if i pull this off if i pull that off which is book binding stuff you may see more what i mean it doesn't matter about this it's going to get ruined anyway um going to be awkward but look let's see if I can find one these books have been sewn and every notebook that you get you will have signatures in it and it's worth there that you see that is a signature there and if you look for the middle of that you'll be able to see the threads there Every book or notebook that you buy, there will be threads of, unless it's stapled. But even stapled, you can have, even that is stapled. If it's stapled in the middle, it's a signature. And the signature is where it's sewn in the middle and then you can there, get hold of it like that. That's one signature. Yeah, you'll have odd bits of papers like that, but that's one signature. And then... That's another one. And you get, <coughs> excuse me, you get that through any book and that's what I'm doing here basically. I am making those signatures to put into a book. Um, so yeah, like I said, there's going to be two. There's going to be quite a few bits of papers inside them. So your book's going to be quite, quite full. And then it's up to you to decorate however you want inside. But then they get sewn into the spine and then obviously they create the book. But then... I've lost track of what I was saying. I'm so sorry. My mind just completely wandered off. It hasn't gone blank. It's just wandered off. Anyway, signature number one. Get back to the signature. Wallpaper. I used wallpaper to do this one. Um, the second one... I'm thinking of using this part of the wallpaper. It is the same wallpaper. It is just a bit further up. This one's got the butterfly on and the rose as well. So, well, I think it's a rose, I'm not sure. So I'm thinking of mainly getting the butterfly in, so cutting it around there. So you'll have that bit as signature number two, or put that as signature number one, so it's a bit more fancy when you open it up. We'll see. We'll see, but I really like that. Um, also, I've got this roll of wallpaper that I think you might like too, which I'm going to also incorporate in your book. And it's this, which is so cute. Love arts with all sorts on. There's some writing on, some with flowers on, flow more flowers. Cool. So I will cut that up as well and Try and incorporate that in your book somewhere too. Um, I have been playing with the signatures and so far I have come up with this, although it is subject to change. Um, so this is the front cover of signature one, front and back cover of signature one. So a piece of wallpaper, nice and sturdy. And then you have some nice pink paper, another um, hair dye paper piece of paper that's been sprayed with purple hair dye part of me gives it a bit of a grungy feel <laughs> and then you have the green card I was talking about and the other book it's the other book the other excuse me the other video it's just been folded in half then you have some oh I like this one not just the paper but I like this one because you have a nice pink flower one there and then when you open it up you've got a pocket because all I've done is just folded the bottom flap up of the paper make it fit in and then you've got a pocket there another piece of paper there that's the middle and then another pocket on that side 
There's the other side to the sparkle paper, the back side of the dyed paper, and then there you go. There'll be way more than that in it. This is by no means least finished. It's not even started, really. Um, they are subject to change in order because as I put more papers and stuff in, pockets and whatever, no doubt I'll change my mind. Some of them might stay in, some of them might even get taken out. I'm unsure about that one. Um, I like it, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if it makes the cut. <laughs> but yeah, so for now, this is as far as I've got. And this is like the... I would say weekly roundup but it hasn't been a week yet this is like the end of this week's roundup video it is now friday the 9th of november so um and video number one went up this morning actually but it was videoed a couple of days ago um this one will be uploaded no it won't yeah, this one will be uploaded, edited, exported and highly likely published tomorrow, which is Saturday the 10th or Sunday the 11th of November. Um, and then we, then we start again then from Monday onwards will be a new week. Um, so, look out for the videos um, on Facebook, those who will be following along. Um, I'd love you to follow along. Um, if any of you could think of any ideas or anything that might you think might work, I'll call you fellow junk journal junkies or anybody else watching. Um, if anybody th thinks of anything that might work, then please, please, please feel free to comment below, pop a link to um, tutorials or other YouTubers, whatever. Um, I'd be gladly, more than happy to go have a look um oh i found these i've got these as well these are threads that come off the um the colored zigzag the colored zigzags when i were cutting them up um but i've kept it because i love the way that it's like two like different colors and i'm gonna probably use that in a tag as well i need to put that in the box before i lose it um but yeah like i was saying any anybody watching if you can if you think that there's a tutorial somewhere of how to do a pocket or a tag or whatever that might go well for this journal, please, please, please link it below. More than, more than happy to have a look. After all, I will be using various other techniques from other that I've learned from other um, junk journal junkies tutorials. So, yeah. Um, I think I have rambled way more than enough today. Very, very, very way more than enough. Oh, do you want to see mess up of the first uh, first unicorn tag? <laughs> Look at this. Look at that. Pathetic. That is where I glued it. I glued it in the middle before I stitched around the edge, but oh my God, what a mess. What a mess. What a mess. So yeah, I was really, <laughs> I was really rather chuffed when I actually managed to do this one. <laughs> yeah, they were like half an hour apart as well. I did that one first and then I just calmed down, took my time and did this one. <laughs> but I love that. I love secret pockets and tucks and stuff like that. I love all that, all that sort of stuff. I, I watch these videos and any of them that are doing them for the children like granddaughter grandchildren or granddaughters grandchildren or fe like um family friends children that sort of thing they are always full of little hidden tuck spots and journaling bits and whatever pockets and stuff and i love all that i'd, I'd love that in a journal of my own so i'm definitely as much as i can going to try and incorporate that into chloe's journal because i think it's just awesome um, but yeah, this is where the um, little book come in. Actually, um, before I do go, I will link to, well, link out, the links are in the description anyway, as always. Anybody who's ever mentioned in these videos, the links to the YouTube channels, whatever, will be below in the description. But this idea, not the tag, but this idea is one that I got from um, Nick the Booksmith. So we just, and it were basically, she'd done, um, 
I forgot what she's called now, but just basically like little scrapbooks. Um, I cannot for the life of me remember what she called them. Um, yeah, but they are just basically little scrapbooks. Um, and it's just using scrap pieces of paper and card and stuff like that. A lot of people use coffee dyed paper in them and what have you. And all it is is um, just long pieces of paper folded in half. Um, what show you on here? Oh, actually, that'll probably be quite good to try. Uh, let me fold it that way. Oops. Not fold it that way, tear it that way, should I say? Doesn't really matter, actually. I could have done it the other way, but... Let's do it this way. So this is it, really. If you've got any scrap pieces of paper, then make them long and thin or whatever make them square they don't have to be long and thin but this is what i did for this one hence why i'm doing it this way and then all you do is you put them together like that make sure they all meet in the middle and then fold them over and then staple basically on on the fold just as close to the edge as you can just give them a staple. That didn't go through very well. Neither did that, but it doesn't matter. You get the gist. Um, and then, because this is quite thick, and then, obviously, to hide the staples and just give it a bit more of a decorative effect, you just get a little scrap piece of paper and just fold it over and glue it. Um, I don't have a scrap piece, but let's just... I'll show you what I mean. <laughs> So that's it, you just pretty much, it doesn't even need to be that big, just there, get a piece, doesn't matter how big it is, fold it, sorry, fold it in half that way, and then glue on there, glue on there, glue on the insides, and then just pop it over, make sure it's stuck, and then when it's dry, cut the excess off, and then you have a cute little book. And that's it, that's all I did. I just did that, as you can tell. That was a cut off of this, which were just scrap pieces of the, um, scrapbook paper, basically. So, and then a piece there to cover it up. Like you can see the staples underneath, but they're not gonna, I flattened them on before I put that on anyway. I made sure they were well and truly stuck down so you're not gonna cut yourself. But yeah, and then I just cut one of the little butterflies out of that ribbon lace stuff and glued it on for a bit of extra decoration. They're so easy to do, and I'm thinking that might be the way to go with them little, or are they, with these. Although, if I do do that with these, I'm not going to glue. I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that technique. I will just put some papers in and I'll sew down the middle of there and I'll make them into a mini little journal i think i want i really i think i actually really do want to do that i think that'd be cool because then you've got two extra little books inside your book i like that idea we'll, we'll see we'll see we'll see i might find a tutorial or something in the meantime that changes my mind on that one but we'll see but for now yeah so like i said i think i have rambled way more than enough links to um nick the booksmith channel is below or will be below should i say um and for now i'm gonna sign off and call this done for your weekly roundup of chloe's journal so this is actually like chloe's journal part two um but yeah so i really hope i haven't put everybody off with the rambling i hope you come back and watch more I hope if you have any suggestions, you pop them below in the comments, links to other tutorials, whatever, even if they're your own, I don't care if you're willing to share and you're happy for me to use them, go ahead, link, link away. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Goodbye.